Notion is a pretty amazing app, but in particularly on mobile, it leaves a little bit to be desired. In particular, if you try to take notes quickly on the go, it can be a bit frustrating to wait for the app to load and then type in things manually. But there's a much better way to do so. You can actually use Siri and Siri's voice notes to directly capture notes very, very quickly from your phone into Notion. Best of all, it's completely free to set up. It won't take you more than five minutes. I'm going to show you exactly how in the next few minutes of this video. Let's jump in. So let's get started and build the Notion backend first. You can, of course, if you have already a Notes database in Notion, simply use that one, uh, then nothing else to set up. Otherwise, if you wanna build along with me, then uh, just open a fresh Notion page and create a simple inline database. This will be called our um, my CV voice notes database, name doesn't really matter. And then we have a name for our note. And then in this, for this very simple version, we will just record our note. So we change this to a note field and a text property. Now you can of course use the method also for additional information, right? You could record tags, you could record date, all these sort of things. I will expand a bit more in the blog post that you can find in the link in the description. But again, for this simple demonstration, this will be enough. So. Set it up like this and then it's time to create our integration for Notion. In order to build your own integration for Notion, you need to head over to uh, notions.so uh, slash integrations, uh, again link in the description, and that will open this page, my integrations. And yours is probably empty if you don't have one. If you are already in the very beginning used the Notion API before it had the easy access, you will have already maybe something there. But um, it's very simple. You simply click on the new integration button. Now, this will require you to input, input some basic information. So we call this Siri uh, Notes to Notion. Uh, if you want to give it a specific name, you could also upload a logo, not really required. And then you need to design, uh, uh, like tell it what's the designated workspace. So for which of your workspace should this integration work? Now, I'm going to use my sandbox uh, for this purpose. Uh, so make sure that you pick the correct workspace uh, here and then make sure that you give it uh, all these capabilities. They are checked by default, but just make sure that they're there. We don't need comments right now and we don't need user capabilities. And then let's click on submit and that will create um, our integration. And we have now here an internal integration token. Now in a moment, you need to uh, click here on show and then on copy. And this is a secret key. So I will delete this after this video. Make sure that you don't share it publicly. Otherwise people can access your Notion workspace and do things with that. So you don't wanna have that happen. Uh, and then yeah, copy it. And now we can move on to the next step. Time to open the shortcuts app on your Mac. Now you could also do this on your iPhone or your iPad, but I find it a lot easier to build it on the Mac. So uh, if you have one, I would recommend that. If you only have an iPhone or iPad, then you have to do it there, but it works just the same. Now, um, if you open the shortcuts app and click on the uh, plus button in the top right corner, um, this opens the interface for a new shortcut. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to name the shortcut. And that, uh, don't give it just any name because that's the command name that you will use together with um, the Hey Siri prompt in order to trigger it, right? So it, it is whatever you say, like whatever you name it is what you have to say after uh, waking up Siri and then um, you start the uh, thing. So in my case, I will uh, call this, let's say, add a new note to Notion. Great. So that's the first step. And then the second step is to prepare our inputs. For this simple workflow, I'm just asking for two inputs. I ask for the name of the node and for the actual node. Again, now, if you had more properties in your database, you could ask for more inputs, or if you later want to make this a lot more complicated, maybe also want to send notes to specific databases based on your inputs, you would uh, in, uh, require some logic here. But for this simple one, this is all we need. To do so, I go on the right side and in the search bar type in ask for text and then you get uh, this option here on the side to ask for input and you can drag it into the builder. Now this will ask for a text input with prompt. So prompt is empty. So this is what Siri will ask you, right? So uh, in this case, um, we will ask, uh, uh, Siri should ask us, uh, what's the name of your note? 
That's the first one. And then we follow with the second uh, ask for text uh, input. And this time uh, Siri should ask us, what is the actual note? Great. <laughs> These two things already give in Siri all the information that we need. And now all that's left is send it to Notion. Now, unfortunately, Apple doesn't have a direct integration for shortcuts with Notion yet. So we can't just type in Notion, right? That doesn't result in anything. But luckily, we can do something that is called a generic API call. And with that, we can access any tool that has an API through our shortcuts. Super, super powerful. Now, the name of this module uh, in the shortcuts app is the get contents from URL, off URL. And we're going to drag that here. And then we need to uh, first specify, uh, well, where, sh like where should it send the information to? And that's not none of the provided inputs, right? By default, it will fill out uh, something from above. So we click on here and we want to clear the variable because we want to input our own URL. And the URL that we want to use uh, is this HTTPS uh, double, uh, colon double slash api.notion.com v1 pages. Again, also in the description and in the blog post. Uh, so you can simply copy paste it. And then we need to click on show more and specify the exact parameters for this uh, call. And the method that we use is a post method. And this will open up a few more options. And the first thing that we need to specify then are the headers. Now, in the headers, we need to authorize ourselves to Notion and tell Notion, well, we are allowed to access this workspace. Please let our call through and also do um, some uh, versioning. Uh, very easy, just follow step by step. So we have, uh, uh, if we expand the headers, we can click on the plus icon and that adds the first key value pair here. And you can then click into the key part and then you can give it a name. And the one that we need to give it is authorization with a Z. Uh, not sure why it, it's like highlighting here, this like this authorization. Okay. And then for the value, we need to input the uh, secret key that we just copied in the previous step, but not just the key. We first need to type bearer capital bearer, then a space, and then we paste in the key. Oops, that's the wrong uh, one. That's not the key, that's the URL. So we need to get the uh, secret key and then hit enter. And then uh, you see like now it, it only shows bearer here, but besides that we have like this very long secret key in here. And that's the first part of the, uh, for the headers. And the second part is something called versioning, where we just need to tell Notion, well, we know that you sometimes update your API rules and our um, shortcut is built based on the rules of this date. So we click again on the plus icon and we call this um, Notion version, both things capital. And then for the value, we input 2022-06-028. Okay, so these are the headers and this uh, first authorizes us to access our Notion workspace and then tells Notion that, well, we actually know what we're doing. We follow your documentation about the API as of this date. Okay, we've authorized ourselves to Notion. Now it's time to send the actual content. So we need to tell Notion, well, to which database in our workspace should the information be added and what's the information that we actually want to add. And to do so, we're going to work with the request body. And again, we have here uh, key value pairs and this time also a third option, a type. Now, we need to set up two things here. We first need to tell it the database and then uh, again, like the content. The first part is fairly easy. The second part a bit more complicated, but with the step-by-step -step instructions, uh, you I'll be sure that you can get it done. Now, we're going to click on the plus icon again. And first, we're going to tell it where it should send things. So this will be called the parent and the type for this one will be a dictionary. And then we can expand the parent by clicking on the plus icon and then hitting the plus, uh, like the toggle here and then hitting the plus icon again. And then we nest something below, right? So make sure that this is nested, right? Toggle, untoggle it to make sure that this is actually inside here. And then inside here, we need to uh, enter database ID. So this time it is small, it's not uh, capitalized and we have an underscore, database underscore ID. And it is a text value. And now we need to find the database ID that we want to save things to. Uh, in order to do so, you can go back to your Notion um, database and then you can open the, um, the database that you have. So uh, this one as a full page, very important, not as the inline version. So open as page and then you will see an URL. If you do it in the desktop app, uh, then simply copy the link. You can do that by pressing command 
L that always copies the link to uh, the page in Notion that you're on and then paste it in your browser so you actually see, the, uh, see uh, this, this URL and then you want to copy the thing after the slash so you have like Notion then you have the name of your workspace then you have a slash and then you need to copy this part until the question mark. Sounds a bit complicated but again between the slash and the question mark without either of the symbols. That's the ID of the database that you're looking at. And then you can go back to the shortcut option and paste that value in here. So that tells Notion, well, please send the information to this database. Okay, now click out of this so that we're no longer uh, in, the, in the parent, whoops. Uh, and then we click on the plus button again to add another item below. So after the parent, we need to define the properties. So type properties, again, small, and then make sure this is a dictionary as well. Then select it, uh, expand it, and add, hit the plus icon again to add something below. Again, double check that to make sure it is inside here. And now we need to, for every property that we want to send to Notion, we need to define here um, the structure of the information. And that one uh, is a bit tricky. Here's the, not the Notion API isn't the most accessible. So it will look weirdly nested, but just go with it, uh, it works. So the first one that we need to do is we need to do our name property. And you need to make sure that you spell it exactly as it is here, right? Uh, and so yeah, here, capital N-A-M-E, right? So do that also uh, in here, name. And this will be a dictionary. Now, inside this dictionary, we're going to nest another entry. Oops, this actually is not nested inside. You see, it's not inside the name, it's inside the properties. We don't want that, so we need to exp uh, open this up. Click plus and now it's nested inside. And here, this will be small title. Regardless of how you called uh, this property, the title property will always have the title here. And this title is not text, it is an array. And then we open this title array up. And inside the title array, we then add another item. Uh, this one can't have a name, it's just called item one. And we, again, will have this as a dictionary. And inside this dictionary, so again, open it up, we click plus again, and here we add now the sm in small text. And this is again <laughs> a dictionary. We're not yet there, but we're nearly are there. So expand this one, hit the plus icon again. And in here, finally, we add the actual content. So we write content. This is text. And this now pulls can pull in one of our values from above. How do we do that? Well, here we simply right click. If you do this on the iPad, then you will have like above your keyboard or like on your iPhone, you will have above the keyboard like this option for like uh, insert variable. Here we do right, right click, click on insert variable, select variable. And then we can now choose from all our previous steps what information it should pull in. And we want to pull in the information from the very first step, right? Where it um, was asking for the name of the node. So we click on provide input and there we have it. So you see, a lot of nesting going on. So we have inside properties, the dictionary. We have the name dictionary. In there, we have a title array, a random item dictionary, a text dictionary, and then the actual content. So you can see if I <laughs> like close it all up, much easier, but make sure, oops, that you also copy this exact structure in order for the API to handle your request correctly. Now, one important note, if you want to build on this yourself, you need to remember that not all properties in Notion are structured this exact way, uh, exact same way. The title property is structured this way and the text field that we're going to work with in a second is structured this way, but other input fields require a different structure. So I will try to add a few more examples uh, in the blog post. So if you wanna add a date field, for example, you can go there and check it out. Um, but yeah, this is the structure you need for the main property of the database and then for text properties. So speaking of text properties, let's add that one. So we click on the, the properties level. So uh, you can like uh, close the other ones up if you want and then uh, highlight it, uh, open it up again and now click on the plus one and this should create one on the same level as name. Yep, that looks good. And this one will be in my case, case note. Again, make sure that it's spelled exactly as the property that you have here. So it will be note and it will be a dictionary. So I open it up and then create again something inside. It, like, same structures here, so we will have an array, although this one is called rich underscore text, and it is an array. And in this array, we add, again, like a nameless um, dictionary, 
And in this nameless dictionary, we add uh, again uh, content, ah, sorry, text dictionary. And inside the text dictionary, <laughs> we add our uh, content text content. And as a value, we again right click to choose an input and we choose this second input. So that's it. If you, of course, have more properties, you need uh, to repeat this. You don't need to fill all the properties, right? But everything that you want to send through the shortcut uh, to Notion needs to be filled out like this. But also, that should be it. So now we can actually test it. We can uh, press the play icon here in the top right corner. And then we can, ah, wait, sorry, one, one thing that I forgot. We need, of course, to give and not just add the integration to our workspace, we also need to give it access to the specific database that we want to access. Very important, I always forget that. So either on the database itself or on a parent page that con uh, contains this uh, database, make sure to click on the three dots and then click on Add Connections. And then what did I call it? I think I called it Ziri, right? Oops, not here yet, so let's see. Sometimes we need to click on uh, the, like Refresh things, but it should actually be there. Let's see what happens if we refresh it. Da, 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 da. Do we find now our Siri? Yes, Siri notes for Notion. Okay, here it is. We need to give it access, otherwise <laughs> it can't send anything there. And while we're at it, let's remove these uh, empty rows. Okay, now we can go to our shortcut, press on run, and then in our, um, oops, uh, when we do that on the, the iPhone, Siri will actually ask us, but because we're on the computer, we will just get these text fields to test. So uh, what's the name of your note? Uh, my first test note. And then it will ask us for the name of the actual note. Um, this is something that I could send directly from my phone to Notion click on done and then it will uh, run and if the first time you run it, it will give you this privacy note do you want to access uh, this uh, URL and you will click on allow and now uh, if everything works then we get uh, this sort of a response back uh, otherwise you will get if it doesn't work you will get an error response back and the error response will usually specify what exactly the issue is but this here looks good so we can go to notion and see well yes it worked my first test note this is something that I could send directly from my phone to Notion. Awesome. Now, you can also, of course, use your phone for it. So uh, if you have uh, a, your phone ready, you can now say, hey Siri, add a note to Notion. This is a test note. The note can be about anything. I can just speak into my phone and it will send all the text right to Notion. That's done. And it's here. See, this is Pretty, pretty amazing. Now you have on your phone the capability to create any sort of yeah, <laughs> voice recording that you want, have it transcribed and send directly to your Notion database. You can of course expand on this and could specify like, well, send it to a specific database. If I say this, send it to that database. If I say that, or add more information, right? Uh, you could combine it with my other shortcut for Siri uh, that is about like ChatGPT, right? You could ask uh, ChatGPT via the short shortcut for an answer and then record it directly to Notion. Or you could combine it with the other shortcut that I have uh, that lets you create uh, AI images or send images to Notion, like lots of opportunities. Shortcuts on the iPhone are so, so powerful and so underused. And if you combine them with Notion, it's just incredible. So there you have it, a new superpower unlocked for your Notion workspace. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer every single one of them. Also, don't forget, if you don't want to build this yourself or if you have any troubles along the way, you can always go to the link in the description to the blog post. You have A, the written instructions there, and you can download this as a ready-made template. With a template, it's plug and play. You download it and it will work immediately. You just need to enter your API key, nothing else. You can use it right away. So that's it here from my side. If you like this, I uh, appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to learn about more unique ways to uh, upgrade your Notion workspace and bring it to the next level, then make sure to follow this channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye.